I need a fresh infusion of your life. Fill me afresh. Come on, ask and say, Father, fill me afresh. Fill me afresh this morning with the life of God because that's the only way I can change my world. I need your breath. Father, I ask this morning, breathe your breath. Breathe your breath. A fresh breath, a new breath. Breathe on me, Father. The Bible says, and God made the man from out of the soil and he breathed upon him and he became a living soul. It's only when the breath of the Lord comes upon us that we can become a living soul. Without the breath of God, without the Holy Spirit, you can do nothing. Without me, you can do nothing, says the Lord. Except you abide in me, you'll be on no fruit, says the Lord. And so, Father God, Maria, I ask this morning, breathe on me. Come on. Pray this morning. Say, Father, breathe on me. A fresh breath. A fresh breath. A fre Come on. Engage with the Lord this morning. And say, Father, God Almighty, release a new breath. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Fill me afresh. Come on, somebody. Let's keep the praying. And say, Father, fill me, Holy Ghost. Fill me. Fill me. Fill me. Fill me with a new life. Fill me. Want to open the book of Genesis this morning. Let's read that scripture before you sit down. Let's read the scriptures and then we'll begin to pray. Just don't sit down yet. I just want us to absorb and draw life and draw life. The book of Genesis, chapter 25, chapter, th chapter 30, sorry. The book of Genesis, Genesis 30, verse 25 to 43, and then also want us to read the book of Genesis, chapter 13. Ch sorry, Genesis 31. I don't know why I keep mixing this up. First one, I, I'm, I'm, and I'm going to just continue to read from, verse, from Genesis 30, and I'll read all to Genesis 31, and we'll close in verse 13. Stay with me, guys. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for fresh breath. Thank you for a fresh breath. We need you, Holy Spirit. In the day of crisis, we need your breath. We need you now. Breathe on us, Father. Breathe on your word. Breathe on your word. Let your word be life and spirit to us. Spirit to spirit, Father. Let your spirit breathe on our spirit. We are your children. Help us to rise from this meeting today, Father God Almighty. Have been ignited by your spirit. So that from the life that we draw from you, we can go and change our world. For that's our purpose. Genesis 30, verse 25, the scripture says, and after Rachel gave back to Joseph, Jacob said to Laban, send me on my way so I can, I can go back to my own homeland. Give me my wives and children for whom I have served you, and I will be on my way. You know how much work I've done for you. Verse 27. But Laban said to him, if I have found favor in your eyes, please stay. I have learned by divination that the Lord has blessed me because of you. He added, name your wages and I will pay them. Jacob said to him, you know how I have, how I have worked for you and how your livestock has fed under my care. The little you had before I came has increased greatly and the Lord has blessed you wherever I have been. But now, when may I do something for my own household? What shall I give you? He asked. Don't give me anything, Jacob replied. But if you will do this one thing for me, I will go on tending your flocks and watching over them. Let me go through all your flocks today and remove from them every speckled or spotted sheep, every dark colored lamb and every spotted or speckled goat. They will be my wages. And my honesty will testify for me in the future. Whenever you check on the wages you have paid me, any gold in my possession 
that is not speckled or spotted or any lamb that is not dark colored will be considered stolen. Verse 34. Agreed, said Laban. Let it be as you have said. That same day, Laban removed all the male goats that were streaked or spotted and all the speckled or spotted female goats, all that had white on them. And all the dark colored lambs, and he placed them in the care of his sons. Then he put a three-day journey between himself and Jacob, while Jacob continued to tend the rest of Laban's flock. Verse 37. Jacob, however, took fresh-cut branches from poplar, almond, and plain trees, and he made white stripes on them by peeling the bark and exposing the white inner wood of the branches. Then he placed the peeled branches in all the water throughs so that they would be directly in front of the flocks when they came to drink. When the flocks were in eat and came to drink, Verse 41. Whenever the stronger females were in eat, Jacob will place the branches in the throws in front of the animals so they will mate near the branches. But if the animals were weak, he will not place them there. So the weak animals went to Laban and the strong ones to Jacob. Verse 43. In this way, can, can we read verse 43 together? In this way, the man grew exceedingly prosperous and came to own large flocks and female and male servants and camels and donkeys. Let's read it one more time. In this way, the man grew exceedingly prosperous and came to own large flocks and female and male servants and camels and donkeys. Flip to chapter 31. It's important. The life that we prayed for, the life of God that we prayed for, Jesus said, the words I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Nothing activates the life of God in a person's life, life of a believer, child of God, other than the word of God. And that's why the devil makes sure you don't see it. Because it knows that the moment you begin to connect with the word of the Lord, then you begin to walk in the breath of the Lord. So let's read the book of Genesis 31, verse 1 to 13. The scripture says, can we read it together? I think this will be beautiful if you all read it together. From verse 1 to 13, you can look it on the screen or you can look it on your, Bible, on your scripture, on your Bible, if you are using the new international version of the scripture. It's also very good to speak the word of the Lord together out into the atmosphere. Amen. Amen. Why? Because that's how we change our world. Because the world was framed by the word of God. It's good to hear preaching, nice preaching, but it's even better to speak the word of God into the atmosphere of your life and create a new reality for yourself in the midst of a messed up world. So let's, let's read together from verse 1 to verse 30, verse to verse 13. Three, go. Jacob heard that Laban's sons were saying, Jacob has taken everything our father owned and has gained all this wealth from what belonged to our father. And Jacob noticed that Laban's attitude towards him was not what it had been. Then the Lord said to Jacob, Go back to the land of your fathers and to your relatives, and I will be with you. So Jacob sent word to Rachel and Leah to come out to the fields where his flocks were. He said to them, I see that your father's attitude toward me is not what he was before, but the God of my father has been with me. Go. You know that I have worked for your father 
with all my strength. Yet, your father has cheated me by changing my wages ten times. However, God has not allowed him to harm me. If he said, the speckled ones will be your wages, then all the flocks gave birth to speckled young. And if he said, the strict ones will be your wages, then all the flocks bore strict young. So, God has taken away your father's livestock and has given them to me. In breeding season, I once had a dream in which I looked up. Speckled. The angel of God said to me in the dream, Jacob, I answered, here I am. And he said, look up and see that all the male goats speckled or spotted for I have seen all that Laban had been doing to you. I am the God of Bethel where you anointed a pillar and where you made a vow to me. Now leave this land at once and go back to your native land. Father, thank you for the entrance of your word. Gives light and it gives understanding to the simple. Father, I ask that you breathe on your word and breathe on our heart, Father. Lord Almighty, catch us, O God Almighty, on your breath, Father. Let there be a new breath of God. Father, I ask, O God, that you will do a new thing in our hearts, in our lives, O God, today by reason of the power of your word. Change our lives, God, that we may change our world. I never said a big amen. Please, you may be seated. Amen. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Wonderful. Put your hands together for the Lord and give God praise. Hallelujah. A tremendous, beautiful story, but let me start by saying, first of all, that there's a technology that God wants to release or share with you today. And this technology is unique to the Lord. Amen. There are things that the world has not seen. There are things that the world has never experienced that God's going to be bringing forth from the church. Amen. Because out of the world, the Bible says, for out of Zion shall come forth, shall proceed the right order of life. God is about to do things in the earth that the world has not seen before, that even science has not been able to record. Amen. And I was having a chit chat with David a couple of days back when the Lord began to hit me with this word. And there's a phrase he borrowed me, with a phrase or, or a statement, it's an engineering statement he borrowed me, and I'm just going to write on that today. And it's genetic engineering. What I say it is? Come on, somebody. Now, you need to understand that the Word of God, God is the creator of all things, including engineering. Amen. God is the greatest engineer. Amen. He's the greatest civil engineer. He's suspended the cloud for how many years and thousands of years, and he's still suspended with no pillars. We even tried to do a few flaws, and we can't even survive except we put a lot of pillars. Now, so when you want to talk about engineering, and engineering is how machine works, and, when, and it is machine that drives systems and processes. So here, God is trying to teach us something about engineering in uh, a particular aspect of engineering that is called genetic engineering. I want you to follow me because it's very important. First of all, I want to, I want to put up a caveat. Whenever you read the Word of God or you come to what you call the church service, you have to understand that you are not coming to a religion. You're not a Buddhist. You're not an Hinduist. You're not an Islam person. You don't go to a place. You go to a God. Somebody did not hear what I said. Most times the reason this word of God does not prosper in our lives is because we're going to a place. We're always going to a place on a particular day of the week. And when we do not go to that place on a particular day of the week, we feel... Something is missing. We feel we are not going to mark the quarter. But what God is calling us to do is a relationship. God is not calling you to a religion. I want you to listen to this because this is very important. Why is this important? It's important because there are a lot of rules that people have put in place that they call Christianity that God is breaking right now, in there right now. There are dimensions of increased prosperity that you will get into and that you must get into but that you will only get into it if you live above religion. If you see your experience as a child of God beyond just going to a church or just praying or just whatever. You need to understand that God is very intent on doing something with your life. Amen. 
But it can only happen through one thing. Understanding that God demands you to have an intimate relationship with him. God wants you to follow him. God wants to hear his voice. Hallelujah. God wants to, to, be, to, to be ready to do whatever it is he tells you to do. Because in this day and time, in the dressing we have come into a season which the scripture calls a time, or what I call, let me borrow the word of Genesis 31 verse 20. It says, in the breeding season. Well, I think, let me just borrow that as the topic of this meeting. The breeding season. For those of you who like to write topics. What's a breeding season? A breeding season is a time of productivity. A breeding season is a time of conception. There are seeds, listen to me, there are seeds <laughs> that God must deposit in your spirit that must grow and that must bring forth a mighty harvest. That's exactly what God was trying to teach us through this experience of Jacob. I want you to follow me. Jacob had had a very rough life as a young person. Jacob had always had to grapple for everything in his life. Nothing that Jacob had came easy for him. He was not even the best. He was not a preferred child. The father preferred, uh, preferred his older brother, his, his, his twin brother. And it's a twin. The father preferred his twin brother Esau. The father will have a lot more interaction with his twin brother. Even in terms of nature, Jacob came after Esau. And so you see, in every way, he wasn't the preferred. And as he tried to make something out of his life, it looked like it was getting deeper and deeper and deeper in the mistake. To a point which you know that he had to run away for their life. Because he couldn't even get a blessing except he stole it. He couldn't even get anything except he lied for it. There was nothing that... And also, not only was, was, he, was he being a victim in his own family, even when he crossed over to his, to his uncle's household, he was still being taken advantage of. Talk about a misfit in the society. He worked seven years for his uncle on contract. And say, in seven years, I will marry your daughter called Rachel. After seven years, on the night of the wedding, he discovered that my uncle, my own blood uncle, has just robbed me, has just taken advantage of me, has just deceived me. Because the man said, well, you work for seven years, but in this culture... We don't give the first child out. Sorry, we don't give the second child out. The first has to marry first. And then the second can come. But uncle, how come you never told me that when we were negotiating seven years ago? It's that kind of experience that Jacob had had. Even his uncle ripped him off. His brother wanted his life. His father didn't even want him. Everything was against him. But there's something that I saw as I looked through the scriptures and as I prayerfully considered the life of Jacob and also seeing what God has done over the centuries with the life of this misfit. You could call it social misfit. Today we talk about the 12 tribes of Israel. Today we talk about the most powerful nation in the world today. That's called Israel. Not only is the Israel a nation that is powerful, also in the world of economics and engineering and medicine and security, Jacob's lineage, Jacob's children's children rule the world. What am I trying to say? There is something that God is about to do with someone's life here in this meeting right now, whoever you may be. You may have been disfavored by your father, cheated by the system of the world. The Bible even said that his uncle did not even just rob him. His uncle robbed him 12, 10 times. Now, as I prayed for this meeting, I recognize there are people who work for others here. I want you to rise to your feet. If you work for others, you don't own your business. You work for others. I want you to rise to your feet. I think God wants to... There's something God wants to say to you. So his uncle Laban, who was his employer, now the first thing was, the first seven years, this man robbed him, gave him a woman he doesn't want to marry, and told him, you have to work another seven years. Jacob worked another seven years. At the end of the seven years, the man said, well, you try, but not enough. You have to work another six years. Seven plus seven is 14. 14 plus 6, that's 20. What could have taken him a breakthrough that could have taken him seven years to get into? He didn't get into it until 20 years after. If that's not a waste of time, tell me what that is. There are many of you who are working under very harsh, under very shallow systems, 
under economic systems that deprive you of the opportunities that you deserve, the promotions, the resources you need. You're working so hard. You're slaving yourself out every day. But when it comes to remuneration, you are the last to be blessed. You're working so hard, but you are being cheated all the time. And you are asking the question, when will I, when will I do my own thing? And I've been there before because sometimes you get to this level where you say, I'm not young anymore. I could take some decision when I was 25. I remember that when I needed to leave my, my, my last job, I was about 29 or, or 30. Even that was hard for me because you can't just abandon what you've done all your life and say, I want to do my own thing. It's very scary. I remember it took me about two years of fear, not being able to make a decision before God actually, actually put me out. And today I'm giving God thanks for that. Because leaving a job, swinging to a new realm, is not something that you want to do. It's hard. It's hard. But it is, it, despite that, Jacob said, if I continue here, I will count another 20 years and still be the same story. What am I trying to say? Some of you here are saying, I'm tired of where I am at. I need to move on. But I'm afraid. I don't even know the next thing to do. I want you to listen to me because the Holy Ghost is about to encounter you. First of all, I want you to lift your voice and say, Father, speak to me. Lift, raise your voice and say, Father, speak to me. Speak to me, Lord. I'm in that moment of crisis. Lord, speak to me. Some of you are young. Some of you are not as young. Some of you have a lot of dependence. And it looks like it's getting more and more scary as you want to make the step and take the step to do your own thing. You know everybody has said the best thing to do is to go entrepreneurial. Do your own thing. But you ask, where is the money going to come from? How am I going to be able to pay, pay my bills? And I thought about that. All, everyone who is about to make a transition. And I do believe that God has brought us into a season of transition. But I want to say to you, friends, it's your breeding season. I want to say to you, friends, it's your productivity season. The best thing that will have come out of it is coming out in this season in the name of the Lord. I want you to follow the Holy Ghost. Please be seated. So the skip, So I was talking about genetic engineering. So as Jacob was struggling and trying to be a good employee, and he was a good employee. In fact, he was such a good employee that his employer said, please don't leave because I have seen by divination. That means the man went to consult far. He went to consult spiritualists and they said to him, Never let that guy go. If you don't want your business to go down, do everything you can to make sure it doesn't leave your employer. And so many times, they promote you on paper and they give you a promise. And then when it's time to fulfill it, they renege. First year, second year, five years. They are owing you so many fees and so many opportunities. They promise you a trip abroad, an official car. And they say, if you spend one more year, we'll do that. And you know, that you know like they know that that is going to be, that's never going to happen. But you can't leave. Why? Because there is so much at stake. So the scripture says, Laban said, they have told me that the reason I am blessed is because you are my employer. And as an employer of labor, I have enough sense to know that if I want to continue to prosper, I must never let you go. Can I, can I tell you something? The system that you are working for, and I want you to hear me, the system that you are working for is designed to make you serve it forever. It's designed. That's why they will give you a reward system. They will give you promotion. They will give you a bigger package. They will say they are even giving you car loan. <clears throat> and they say in four years you can take the car. All the idea is do not let her leave. Do not let him go to do his own thing. But I do believe in the name of the Lord that this is your season. Amen. Your amen is too shallow for me. I say this is your season. <laughs> so back to the story of, so, so God is about to teach you something about moving you into wealth. Let me also say this. When people, when people talk about wealth in church, and I know there's a lot of people who are bastardized through wealth in church, what they call the prosperity message. And so because of the charlatans who preach a wrong dimension of the prosperity, people in church have come to say, accept that, well, it is my lot to be poor. It's my lot to work out and never break through. It's my lot to just serve some the rest of my life and end up with, uh, with a retirement package. 
How many people know that retirement packages are gone right now? Uh, the days when you work 35 years, and after 35 years, they give you retirement package. Uh, they give you, they give you uh, what's that word they give them? Sorry. Rolex. They gave you Rolex after 35 years. They don't even give you Rolex anymore now. Yeah. After 35 years, they say, well, what, what are we owing you? They say, one, one salary. They pay you the salary. Is that correct? They give you the salary and that's all. So, friends, if you have done 20, 20 years in that place already, and you are saying, I'm afraid to leave. Let me just wait another 15 years. I want to say to you, in 15 years' time, you are 40 right now. In 15 years, you're going to be 55. I want to say to you, it's getting blurry. It's getting more dangerous. It's getting more uncertain by the day. The world system is shaking. Economics are failing. If you want to put your faith into the hand of an employer, God help you. It's high time you took your life in your own hands. Go to God and say, God, breathe upon me. Because he wants to do that. So what did God do? God spoke to Jacob. God said, Jacob, come follow me. And as Jacob was in an encounter with the Lord, the scripture said, God opened the heavens. And this isn't the first time God would do that. The scripture says, God opened the heavens and uh, Jacob saw an angel. And the angel said to him, I see your tatravail. I see you work very hard. You are a very devoted staff in that place. You won the best award, staff award for the last five years in that place. Yet, nothing is coming in. So I have seen your affliction and I want to help you pro pro prosper. Someone say prosper. prosper. Come on, someone say prosper. prosper. I want you to lift you. If you believe that God is set up making you prosper, lift your hands up. Hallelujah. Someone shout prosper. prosper. Someone shout prosper. prosper. We, what I'm believing the Lord to happen to you and to me is verse for the three of Genesis 30. The scripture says, And Jacob increased, and Jacob prospered, and in every area he so prospered. Hallelujah. And I'm believing God for, some, for that, for someone here in the name of Jesus. So what I'm trying to say is that serving God, working with God, is, and, and prosperity is not mutually exclusive. There is no such thing, okay, I am serving God, but it's okay if I'm poor. I'm serving God, it's okay if the system shall changes me. I'm serving God. I'm a church guy. I'm a church worker. I'm a committed pastor in my church. But, you know, when it comes to this thing of breaking through, of prospering, well, don't let's talk about it. I don't think it's Christian. I don't think it's godly. If I get prospered, I will backslide. Are you not backsliding already with your, with your lack of prosperity? So you can, so you need to start thinking differently that in this season, it's a season for productivity. It's the season for your expansion. It's the season for your prosperity. How many people here don't like to prosper? Put your hands up. I don't like prosperity. I hate prosperity. Put your hands up. All right. How many people here love to prosper? Hallelujah. I want to say it again. How many people here love to prosper? You will love to prosper. You will love to have yourself described like the Bible described Jacob. How many people? Put your hands up. Let me borrow you this. If today we are talking about Jacob and his children and his children's children as the holiest or as the most godly people in the world and their forefather Jacob got this much wealth, that means serving God and prospering, they're not, they're, they're, you, you don't have to have one and sacrifice the other. That means that you need to prosper. Amen. You need to have your needs met. You need to be able to say, I'm increasing in cattle. I'm increasing in livestock. So how did God make that happen to, Jake, to Jacob? If very, we, that's why I said we need to read the story together. Very simple story. What did God do? The Bible says an angel of the Lord appeared to Jacob in a dream and said to him, I've seen your suffering and I've seen how you have been shortchanged for, for so long. But right now, I'm going to do something for you. And the Bible says, God... David Jacob said it. He says, while I was in the dream. So two things that happened. God locked that man down in a dream. Someone said, Lord, give me a dream. Come on, reach and Say, Father God Almighty, open me up to the supernatural. Say, Lord, open me up. Come on, make a prayer right now. Say, Father, open my heart. Make a prayer. Say, Father, open my heart. Open my heart, Lord. So this was what God did. God opened the heart of Jacob to the supernatural. 
He had a dream. What we call a prophetic dream. What's a prophetic dream? A prophetic dream is a dream where God tells you specifically what's about to happen and what to do about it. Because there is no way on earth that Jacob would never, would ever have been able to try what he tried if he was just a hard-working man. And Jacob was a very hard-working man. The testimony of Laban was, you have been a hard-working man. My company is getting better because you are the best staff. But you can be the best staff, the most hard-working of staff, and still be poor forever. You can be the best staff, the staff with the most integrity, and the system cuts your throat all the time. I told you that the system, the economic system of the world is designed for you never to prosper. Forget about what they tell you. Yo, you can be big, you can be that. All right. The system, because the prince of the power of the air knows that when you prosper, huh, when you prosper, then you will do damage to the kingdom of darkness. You will help people. You will change lives. You will fund ministry. You pay your bills. You raise healthy children. You never have the next fight with your wife. How many people know that right now? What causes the most divorce right now is chop money. Hello, people. So, listen to me. If there's any man in this room, okay, who wants to keep his marriage? You got to be wealthy. You got to prosper. I didn't hear amen. amen. I will say it again. I will say it again. If there's anybody in this room, who wants to save his marriage? All right. I can tell you this. When you have money, your children respect you. When your children respect you, they ask you what you need. It's now you that will tell them, I don't need anything. But when you don't have money, your children will disrespect you, and they'll see you like a leech. And once you call, they'll say, oh, this man is calling again. So you can do with some prosperity. Can I hear amen, somebody? Because church folks need to understand that you can be a believer, child of God, and prosper. As a matter of fact, you need to prosper. Amen. I said you need to prosper. I said you will prosper. All right, so what's the secret? So we're talking about genetic modif modification, genetic engineering. What does it mean? It basically means an aspect of engineering or a process of engineering where an animal or a plant is made to go through uh, a change that will make them produce some result. Let me make it a bit, a bit more uh, clear. In the world as we have right now, in the Western world, we have what we call GMO, GMO um, foods. What that means is that, uh, I'm sure some of you have seen uh, oranges that have, no, that have no seeds in them. How many of you have seen it? Some of you have brought grapes. That, have, you, have you wondered how, did, how do you have grapes? That doesn't have seed in it. It's the way they are, you are able to mass produce a process. Now, the world has done that effectively in, an, in farming, in agriculture, plant agriculture. They haven't been able to do it in animal agriculture. Up until, I checked this thing up, up until today, the world's best science is just saying, being able to have genetic engineering of animals, cows and livestock and goats is still a work that is in the process of research. What happened in the book of Genesis chapter 30, right, that engineering that God did is not the scientists of the world are not able to produce it. The closest they have been able to do is to get cows to produce more milk. But what Jacob did under God was not for his cows to produce more milk. It was for black goats to produce white goats. <laughs> uh, you, you don't understand what I'm saying. Every animal will produce after its kind. If it's a brown goat, when two brown goats meet, they produce brown goats. Is that correct? But what happened in the Bible was two brown goats met and they produced a white. It's never happened. It still has not happened. Engineering is still researching on it. They will never break that code. It's a divine code. What am I trying to say? As futile as the system of the world is, God is still releasing stuff 
God is, is he downloading resources to his children? Do I have a child of God in this house right now? Are you are too quiet for me. Do I have a child of God in this house right now? As toxic, as evil, as the economics of the world is right now, God is still very interested in downloading amazing engineering work that your world has never seen before. That's what he did. So how did the story go? Uh, so when Laban saw that this man could do nothing except by my salary, he began to call his salary. Ten times he changed his salary. And then Jacob said to him, Sir, it's high time for me to go back to where I came from. I think it's high time I went back home. And like I told you earlier on, if you think that your boss likes you, you're a very good staff. You are the best staff. Try to tell them you are going. That's where you know that all hell will be let loose. Because they know what you're going will do to the bottom line. So what does that mean? That means that you are actually a slave. That means that you are actually needed. Now they can pretend that they don't need you, but you just try and put in resignation. Or tell them, I'm thinking of going, that you will see what happens. So that's what happened to Jacob. As Jacob and that he went to leave, the scripture says, the man said to him, let's have a conversation. Bible says, he took all the animals, David labor now, took all the animals that were brown or black in nature and gave them to his sons and says, this guy, he has been with us for 20 years. He must not go blessed. The system of the world is designed like that. That even after 20 years of working so hard for that system, you have had it to the bottom line, you have helped them. The system doesn't want you blessed. The system will do everything. The people will do everything to make sure you never break through. That's why your prayer has to change. In this season, what I call the breeding season, what I say this season is, what I say it is, what's the breeding season? A season when, you, when, when animals meet because they're on heat. Can I tell you something? You have to know that the atmosphere of the spirit is on heat right now. This is the season where God is dropping seeds. Anybody hear what I'm saying? Where God is doing what? God is dropping sperm cells into your own spirit. Let me try and make it a little bit graphic. When a man joins with a woman and they have an intercourse and the man drops a sperm cell into the vagina of the woman and it goes into the ovary and it forms with the egg and the child comes forth. That's what's happening right now. God is dropping seeds, but God is looking for wombs. God is looking for wombs. That's why, that's what that conference was all about. In case you did not understand, God set up that conference to be a seed dropping atmosphere. God put this man together because God in this season is dropping seed. Now you have to know that God is a seed carrier. You have to be the seed receiver. And that's why you need to open your spirit and say, Father, my womb is open. And when we talk about womb, we're talking about that which we use to process what God is bringing. Now, I know many of us have come to a point in our life where we feel successful. And Lord began to say this to me. I think David was sharing on Wednesday. And if only he understood what the dimension was, he was sharing. God was telling me, what are you thinking about? Slap me. God slapped me back to, 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 to waking up. And saying, it's, it's time. Don't you understand that it's a, it's, a, it's a breeding season for you? And friends, I'm telling you, there are things that I'm going to be birthing. Crazy things in the days to come. I don't care what the world thinks. I don't care whether the world thinks that. Sometimes the world says that you are successful. Because you drive the Benz. Because you live in a beautiful house. Because you build a five-story building church. Because everybody respects you. Because you are going to throw around. One of the greatest disasters you can do to yourself is to stop growing is to stop receiving the seed from God. And so I began to have a new conversation with myself since Wednesday. God, there's something new for me. Hey, friends, something's about to happen in my life. Amen. Amen. Because this is the breeding season. So this is what Jacob did. We read the story together. After Laban took all the animals, he told his children, this guy is dangerous. 
We have been blessed because he came to work for us. Now he wants to leave. And now he has used the sweat equity of Jacob to build his children's future. To give his children a future. And that's what the worst them will do. The worst them will use you to build a business empire. You will sweat, you will toil, but it's not for you to enjoy. It's for their children to enjoy. And that's why you must not be stupid and get yourself rooted by fear and say, we die here. You die there, they bury you. Life continues. You have to have the right conversation with the Lord and say, God, pastor said, it's a breeding season. Lord Almighty, what are you breeding? Lord, what do you want birthed? Lord Almighty, what do you want to form on the earth? What new ideas? Can I tell you something, friends? In the breeding season, that's the time for what we call ideation. There are new ideas that, the world has never, that your world has never seen before that God must begin to speak to your heart. You have to have a time of seclusion where you are talking and say, God Almighty, there is something you need to do. Many people do not understand why I put in the church capstone, P, pioneering. And we, use, we say that every Sunday. I am an innovator. Many of you do not understand. You think it's a religious cliche. It's by reason of this kind of thing. We want to be in, in, innovators. We want ideas to come from this house. I want to see ideas come from your life. Things that the world has never seen before come from your loin. Because in a breeding season is the day for ideation. Is the day for innovation. Someone say ideation. What does that mean? Ideas. You just have a brainwave. You just have strange ideas. The world will say, what does that even mean? You say, I don't know, but I just have these strange ideas. I just have this brainwave. Is I time. Hear me. Everybody listen to this. Is I time you brought an idea upon the earth that a world that your nation has never seen before. We don't even want to do what others have done. There's, in, in, in innovation, there are levels of innovation. There are some innovation that we call incremental innovation. There are some innovation that we call breakthrough innovations. Now, innovations, when they are incremental is... Well, somebody did this, then we do this. This carpet is brown, so we will make it light brown. That's incremental innovation. But breakthrough innovation will be that you put an ordinary floor, you see an ordinary floor, and you pour some water on it, and you go to the door, and by the time you come, the whole place is carpeted. And you say, what's that? You tell them it's not what I, I will not share it with you. That is a breakthrough innovation. I want to ask and say, Father God, Almighty, give us this kind of innovation in the name of Jesus. God is bringing genetic engineering. So J J Jacob said to his, to, his, to his wife, let me tell you the secret of my prosperity. Because you saw that I began to increase in animals. And as he sat to negotiate with this boss, he knew he didn't stand a chance with the boss. God himself knew that this boy will die poor. He does not stand a chance against the system. So I must put him to sleep and give him a prophetic dream. In that prophetic dream, an angel appeared to him. The angel said to him, I want to show you what is possible. I want to show you what's possible. He said, look, at that, look up and see. He said, what was it? He said, see. He said, you see that male goat? You see that male goat? He's going to mount that male goat right now. And they are going to bring forth a special type of goat. Jacob said, this has never happened before. God said, that's why I came to tell you that with me, all things are possible. That for him that believes, nothing shall be impossible. Let me say this to someone in the room right now who is a doubting Thomas. There are things that God is set to doing with your life and with my life that our world has never seen before. There are things that God is set to doing with, this, with us that Nigeria has never seen before. Let me speak to myself. Some of us here in this room are going to be pioneering ideas, great things that Nigeria, Africa has never seen before. Amen. And the world is going to be paying us for it. Amen. It's when the Lord began to speak this to my heart that I decided that we are going to start what we call a wealth creation unit. Because I'm tired of saying to people, bring an offering, bring an offering. And people can only give out of what they have. If a man has nothing, what does he give? 
But if we empower you and we lock you up with God and God downloads on you supernatural interventions and genetic engineering and you can produce your own crop, you can produce your own livestock from what does not exist, then we know we are talking. Hallelujah. And the average person really loves the Lord. And you feel bad when they are giving offering and you don't even have to give. And the usher looks at you one, one way. And you know these ushers, there's a way they know that every time they come, you never give the offering. Last week, that's how they give. You are doing, and you too, you have also perfected the art. You will be put, putting your hand in your pocket as if you have a post. You know you don't even have anything. You don't even have a post. And the ushers have marked you. But that's about to change. I said, that's about to change. You have to cry. I said, that's about to change. If you believe that, scratch your feet and say, yes, I believe it. I said, that's about to change. I said, that's about to change. I said, right now, it's a pretty season. That's about to change. Everything's going to change. And from that revelation that God gave, please be seated for five minutes as I learn this. By the revelation that God gave, Jacob now had something to work with. So when his boss cheated him and his boss deprived him of what was rightful is, he knew that I'm not going to be afraid because I had had an encounter with God. And because God had shown him that what was possible, he went to work the following day and he, look at what Jacob did. You read the story. It's your Bible. It's the word of God. What did Jacob do? Jacob went to the back of the house, took a, a tree, cut the branches, took a knife, stripped it, allowed the internal part, which is white, to show. The things that God will need for you to do are not far-fetched. They are next door to you. They are in your backyard. But they will produce great results in the name of Jesus. Many of you are asking, Pastor, how can these things be? I don't have anyone. I don't have too many people. I don't have connections. I'm saying what God's going to use to change your life, they are next door to you. They are ne- That's why the people beside you must treat them well. The breakfast is in someone's hand. Somebody's going to introduce to somebody who will introduce somebody and everything will change. Because God, in this bidding season, is saying, I am bringing prosperity, I'm bringing expansion, I'm bringing increase, because it's high time my people went out into their freedom and do their own thing. Can I, can I hear amen? amen? So Jacob went back to the back of the house, took a bit, a, 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 a tree, took his knife from his pocket, pen knife, sh- bro- bro- broke it apart, got the animal, put them, put a bowl, this is like, a, let's say this is a trial where they feed, where they get them to drink water, whatever it is, okay? And brought the animals. Don't forget, listen to this. As at this time, Jacob had no animal. Jacob did not produce the great animal harvest from his own livestock. He had none. All the animals belonged to his uncle Laban, his employer. And the employer knew that what the term that he had given Jacob, there is no way on the earth that Jacob can never make that happen. But when a man has encountered God, or let me put it this way, when God has encountered a man, that with the enemy meant for evil, God turned around for good. Jacob said, boss, the only thing I need is just let me walk your animals. Don't worry. Never disclose your God-given strategy to your boss. I'll say that again to somebody. What I'm sharing with you right now, God's going to lock some of you in a sleep overnight. Some of you are going to be driving and God's going to give you some ideas. Don't get to the bottom tomorrow and say, I have a new idea. You're stupid. It's yours. What I say. Start planning your exit now. That's the problem I have with Africans. They have been too damaged to take what is theirs. This is a new season of the Lord. God is breathing, bringing forth conception. He's going to be giving you these ideas as you sit in prayer. It's going to be locking this in your heart. And he will say to you, you don't have to travel so far. It's in your house. It's in your degree. It's in where you live. It's next door to you. So Jacob took the leaf, took the broke it open, brought out the, 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 the white part. And I now got all the animals of his boss. Listen to this. All the animals of his boss. 
Anyway, he's the one feeding them. Let me say this also to you. Your breakthrough is in where you are working right now. What did I say? What did I say? Pastor, what did you say? Where you are working right now, you are being, where you are being shortchanged, where you are being deprived, what is, what is yours? Your breakthrough is there. I can tell you stories of my life. I can tell stories. Many times people say, well, let me go. Don't look outside the fence. Look within. What does it make sense to your boss? What does not make sense to your organization? Those are the things that God will open your eyes to and they'll say to you, no, 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 you can, you can, you can take it. And that will be your own breakthrough. I always tell people about how I made my first million in 1994. I made my first million in 1994 when money was money. I used to be a very low-level sales executive and, and uh, I, I probably sold the worst among my, I had other people who were very powerful and they could do all of our big deals. One day my boss looked at me and said, you young man, I was, I was, I was about 24, there, but my boss looked at me and said, you young man, you're always bringing in new, new, small, small deals. You, you, go, for, go for the big deals. And I did everything to go for the big deals, uh, but I, I couldn't succeed. So when I was leaving, my boss said, as a matter of fact, you always put this report, this company in your report all the time. Stop it now. Because it don't give us good deals. So when I was leaving the company, guess what I did? I took that company that my company said they don't want. I cleaned my shoe, stretching my jacket. Those days I used to wear a jacket a lot. Because you have to wear a jacket for you to come into the room. It's going to be a that you start wearing a bad and How many people know what I'm talking about? And uh, I stretched my jacket and I went, to, I, I, I went to, to this client. This client that my company said they didn't want. The client said to me, where are you from? I told him. I said, but I've left them. He said, okay, we want something and gave me a deal for 17,000 naira. I took it, got my hand, I said, babe, I, I just got this deal. My wife said, okay, that's not, that's not bad. He said, I should come back. So I went back about two weeks after. He gave me another deal. Anyway, to cut a long story short, the guy gave me a deal of a million naira. Let me tell you what my salary was that time. My salary was about 550 naira per month. In a year, my salary would be 550, you are mathematic, 550 times 12. You can imagine what I saw when I had 1 million naira check in my hand. I felt like a madman. When the Lord turns the captivity of Zion, they were like, them that dream. I want to say to somebody here, God's about to give you a new dream. God's about to give you a new possibility. Let me tell you what the joker was. When I was working in that company, I used to believe God as a prayer point. Lord, I'm so nonsensically paid that I can never have an official car. So Lord, give me a breakthrough. Let them promote me in the next two years. And let them say to me, this is your official car. Lord, it will be a breakthrough of a lifetime. God must have done you move to me. And say that this one, they will, they will, they will kill you forever. They will never, you never have a... <laughs> so when I hit my first million... Okay. And I bought my first car. I drove to my former office. My car was better than all my manager's cars. And they knew how much I was, I was earning. If it was the day of Yahoo, they would say, this boy has done Yahoo, Yahoo. But they knew I was a believer. They didn't know what it was. But right, what am I trying to say? Right in the company where I worked, where they said, forget about that small order, was where God gave me my first client. And from that client, don't give me a bigger one. Because now they began to refer me to others. In less than one year, I opened my furniture factory. I tell people that today people come to this church and they see furniture, they see everything aligned. It's because uh, this is part of the benefit of serving in that place where they paid me peanut. Is it? So your breakthrough, your breakthrough is in a place where you work. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Are you hearing what I'm saying? What did I say? What did I, because people, church people, they just want to pray and go home. What did I say? What did I say? Speak to yourself. What did I say? What did I say? Where you are right now, whatever you are doing right now, don't look, don't even look for another job. That's where it is. God must open your eyes. So as Jacob brought the animals together, I close this. As he brought the animals together, the scripture says, you need to read the, the, the Bible in several versions. There's a version called the Complete Jerusalem Bible. It says, Jacob took the rod. 
that he had opened the bag and he put it standing upright before the goats. Now that ties to a principle of science. Scientists will tell you that whatever a female sees, she produces after it. It's a, it's a truth in engineering. It's a truth in science. So this is what Jacob did. God was teaching him this. Jacob took the rod that he had removed the back, put it in the water throughout. He made sure that as the animals come, the female, as the animals came to meet, oh, somebody's not hearing this. In fact, what God did was not as a result of the spam of the brown animals. It was a spam from above. All God needed was get the female to see. Get the female to see. Once the female sees, she will produce after its kind. In three, four, five months, as the female saw, they began to produce animals that could never have been possible by our Greek science and engineering. And that's what God will do. By the time God was done, I can't even go far, by the time God was done with him, the scripture says, even along the line, God began to give Jacob an idea and says to him, when animals are produced during the winter, they are stronger than when they are produced during the, during the hot, hot season. And so Jacob understood this because God taught him that. And so every animal that produced during the winter, he kept for himself. All the ones that were produced during the heat man, he took them. I went and did a study on this, a research on this. And they tell you that the cow, the cow is designed to be able to withstand cold temperature. In fact, they do very well when the atmosphere is cold. And so, not only was God giving Jacob an idea to make wealth, because God would do that. God was also giving him step-by-step -step strategy as to how to get the best of result. The most beautiful of result. The most productive of result. In the final analysis, the scripture says, Jacob got so wealthy. Not only did he get wealthy, he got wealthy with some of the, some of the healthiest animals and livestock. Because God taught him. What am I trying to say? I'm saying in this season, God wants to teach you. Are you ready? Are you ready? You are too quiet. Say, are you ready? Many of you are not ready. That's why you envy those who are ready. You say, you say to them, well, what do they have? What are they? They are ready. For anyone who is ready, you don't need to envy them. There is enough for everyone because the same God who walked with the fugitive Jacob. You know what Jacob means? Jacob is like a never do well. The Jacob means the one who cannot, who doesn't have resources, so he must grab somebody at, his, at the heel. That's me, that's me. Yeah, yeah, you, you call it supplanter. That's the big word. Tell me that you use big words. That's your strength, amen. And from your big words, the world will come to you. Amen. Don't even go anywhere. From your big words, the world will come to you. Because there are dimensions of the world that need your kind of voice and the kind of things you say. So understand them. All right. And we call it supplanter. But Jacob means the one who takes the other person who is in front of him by the heel and pull him back. He's so disadvantaged that he's always looking for somebody's butter to steal. He's so disadvantaged that everybody is ahead of him. They have gapped him. He must put his hand on their feet and draw them back. Bad guy. Let me I close with this. There's not, hear me. And many of you may be misunderstanding. I don't want you to misunderstand. In this season, there is nothing called morality. I'll repeat myself. One of the reasons why many of you will not be able to enter into what God is bringing you. So you are too moral. The journey of what you call the Christianity is a journey of faith. It's not a moral journey. All your morality are like filthy rags. The only righteousness that you have is what Jesus purchased for you. Because I see, I see church folks saying, I qualify to be better because, because, because I don't sleep with somebody else's wife. Because I don't want to know that, that. Yeah, that's fine. You sleep with somebody else's wife. The husband catches you and, and shoots you dead. You catch STD. Get what I'm saying? Right. Right? You get what I'm saying? Well, let's get, let, let's get it twisted. What God was doing and what God was teaching Jacob there is no way a religious man will enter that. Because God said to him, take the animals, put them to water during winter time. 
let them meet. Forget about him. I'm about to plunder him. I'm about to steal his livestock for you. God is a thief. I'm, I'm really just saying, eh? Ah, eh? Hey, ah. That's why I'm deliberately using the worst of words for you. God said, I'm going to take his stuff for you. Are you ready? He God said, let's go. God said, so let's take my advice. When the first one meets, make sure it's winter time. Because in winter time, the animals are healthier. Once they meet, take those ones that God produced in winter time, let them produce again. What the Bible described here in Genesis chapter 30 is a period of about two years or thereabout. Because it takes time for an animal to conceive, to produce, to grow, to produce others. I know we read in a hurry, one chapter of scripture. This is a this is, this is a process. Some of you are in the process of what God is saying right now. He's taking you through a line of thinking. He's teaching you some ideas. He's giving you some innovations. You're wondering, but God, this is, not, this is not moral. Who is talking about morality? We're talking about God here. And God did that. And by the time God was done with Jacob, he had all the resources. He was prosperous. And the Bible says... He left back home to fulfill his purpose. I do believe that somebody here this morning that God sent me to, you have been religious all your life, but you've not nothing. You've been in church all your life, but you had no encounter with the Lord. From now onwards, the Lord's going to be speaking to your heart. He's going to be showing you things. You're going to be going to some places. You're going to be stumbling on some materials online. You're going to be stumbling on some relationships. They're going to be speaking something to your life. Do not let your religious spirit cut you short. Are you listening to what I'm saying? This is the breeding season. If God says go for it, you go for it. Don't say, go, but God, what will my boss say? Forget about your boss. It's about God now. He wants you blessed. He wants you prospered. He wants you to mate. He wants you to conceive. He wants you to increase on all sides. When we're talking about holiness, we're dealing with it on an issue. But this day, heaven is open. I want you to raise your hands and say, Father, I receive this. I walk in this. Lord, I'm not religious. I thank you for revelation. Thank you for what you have revealed to me. Father, I'm ready. Someone say, Lord, I'm ready. Open my spirit, Lord. Open my spirit, Lord. I'm ready, I'm ready Lord. Fill my heart. Lord Almighty, incubate inside me. Come on, talk to God. Use words like incubate. You know what it means to incubate? That means that it's a seed that must move with some, with some egg inside you, Lord. Incubate me. Come breathe upon me, Lord. Come breathe upon me, Lord. Spirit of spirit, father to child, breathe upon me. Come on, speak to God and say, Father, breathe upon me. Breathe on me, breathe on me. Put your hands on your womb and say, Father, I receive conception. Come on, say, I receive conception. Make that as a prophetic indication of your spirit, of, the, of your spirit. Put your hand in your womb, whether you're a man or woman, and say, Father, I receive power to conceive. The Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 8, 18, it is God that gives ideas to make wealth. There are ideas that God must bring to make wealth. It's high time you became wealthy. That is is the season of the Lord upon this church right now. And I stand here to say to you, not only the male, the female, every one of us here will walk in this in the name of Jesus. As you go to work tomorrow, the Lord will open over you ideas and you say, you have been opening this file. It will, it will lead you to a, a page of the file. And you say, that's a business idea. Take your phone. Snap it. But God is stealing. That's not stealing. That's God leading you. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Anybody here listen to what I'm saying? You are not, I, I know you, I know you, I look like a bad guy right now. Is that correct? Uh, what's this pastor preaching? What I'm preaching is uh, heaven is up. It's a breeding season. It's time for you to enter into what God has for you. It's the time for results. It's the time for resource. As you walk through the boardroom, you're going to eavesdrop and hear some conversation. What do you do? Hide behind the door. And if someone catches you and says, Why are you doing? Say, Well, I'm just trying to remember something. Lie to them. Amen. Download every idea that they're bringing. I give you license. Anybody hear what I'm saying? Anybody else? Religious but not hearing me. I know your religion is saying, Oh, no, what is it saying? What I'm saying is, there is something God is opening up to you. And those information don't come to you in your church service, they come to you as you walk past the boardroom. 
they come to you as you drive through the Uber. They come to you as you sign those forms for credit. Father, we receive. Come on, somebody talk to God and say, God, I receive. Breathe over me, Lord Almighty. Father, as we, as we break bread, thank you, Father, because heaven is open above us. This thing I'm talking to you about, you are going to begin to see the manifestation in the next couple of months, some of you. All of us are going to begin to walk in the manifestation of this in the next couple of years in the name of Jesus. By the time you come to this church, you'll be amazed at what God will have done with people's lives in the name of the Lord in the next two years. Because God will have brought you into conception and God will have increased you and God will have multiplied you and God will have prospered you greatly in the name of the Lord. Somebody say, I receive it. Come on, someone say, I receive it. Do we have the element? Do we have the element? God was gonna, God was gonna, God was gonna bless Isaac. We heard that stuff. God was gonna bless Isaac. Do we have the element, everybody? And took him to lead his wife. Abimelech saw his wife and said, "Is that your wife?" Says, "My, is my, is my sister." So guys, you need to understand that God is God doesn't think like you think. There are things that God God is concerned about prospering you and changing your mindset. In the name of the Lord, Amen. Father, we want to thank you this morning. I receive grace myself and grace my brethren. And Father, we enter into the prosperity like Jacob entered into. Prosper that is transgenerational. And Father, we receive as we break bread in the name of the Lord. Now there might be somebody here who doesn't know Jesus yet. I want to encourage you. Please do not leave this meeting until you have made peace with God. The Bible says God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. If you're a stranger to the covenant of God, you need to make peace with God. Jacob was a man who walked with God. You saw he was, a, he made vows, he built altars, he set up pillars. God wants an encounter, a relationship with you. This message will only prosper you if you are willing to go with God on the terms of the covenant. And that's, talking about covenant, that's why we have this bread. This is how we celebrate the covenant that we have with Jesus. It's all about the covenant. So, Father, this morning, we thank you for the power of the covenant. And as I receive, Father, I receive grace for myself and for my brethren. That, Father God Almighty, the blessing that you have for our lives will be ours in the name of Jesus. We pray for revelation. As we break bread, as we eat, Father, we say the eyes of our heart are open in the name of Jesus. Come on, break bread in the name of the Lord and eat. The Bible calls it a cup of blessing. What's the blessing? A blessing breaks every curse. There are people in this room who have been going through generational curses. Have you heard of generational blessing? It's happening right now in your life in the name of Jesus. Because the blessing of the, of the cross, because the blessing of Abraham is coming to you by faith. And so when I declare you blessed, receive the element in the name. Put your thanks on you and say, Father, thank you. Thank you for my eyes are open. Thank you for revelation. Thank you for insight. Thank you. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. Come on, give him thanks this morning.